rebuilding three Stuart steam plants. And this is part three. After removing the pistons using the simple and effective method of drilling two small holes in each piston, I use circlip pliers to unscrew the pistons from the rods. The crankshaft and main bearings can then be removed, complete with the connecting rods and crossheads. Before starting to remove the pistons, I need to remove the motion work. And here I am unbolting the main bearings using a socket. Unscrewing the pistons will demand a bit of force, and I don't want to put any pressure on the main bearings or the connecting rods. That's why at this early stage I'm removing the entire mechanism. I will be cleaning up this selection of parts in another episode. These parts are now in a safe place away from any potential damage. I thought I'd show you the centre bearing. This is a split bearing. The lower bearing has a hole in it which locates on a peg where it fits to the casting. Time now to look at the pistons. They're a bit of a mess and both of them are chewed up either by attempts at removing them or maybe during the fitting process. I have a very simple method for removing pistons. It's just unbelievably simple and all you need is a mini drill and a very small twist drill bit. I'm drilling two holes, one either side of the slots on the pistons. Please be aware that these holes do not need to be very deep. They certainly do not need to go all the way through the piston. That would be a disaster and the engine wouldn't work very well. I didn't mark anything out on these pistons, I just did the whole job by eye. And the pistons are serviceable, they're a very good fit in the bores, but I really am thinking about making a pair of new pistons and fitting them with steam grade silicone o-rings. The bores on this engine are very good, because it has done some running. Although overall the engine isn't very worn at all, there are just one or two curious things about it that I don't really understand like the rough finish on one edge of the flywheel and the fact that the piping is upside down. The cylinders have been assembled the wrong way round. Generally speaking with steam engines, steam goes in at the top and comes out at the bottom. But with this engine, the reverse is true. I need to correct that. As you can see here, with a screwdriver through the holes in both of the crossheads, I use the circlip pliers first to release the piston from the piston rod and once it's loose I just use a screwdriver in the existing slot to spin the piston off the rod altogether. I'm going to show the drilling of the other side but this is at a higher speed. I'm sure by now you get the general idea. This is very messy and bits of gun metal go everywhere but it will be okay after I've done the job I will clean the area and the bench around where I'm working. In exactly the same way as previously shown, first of all I release the pressure using the circlip pliers and then spin off the piston. Once I remove the piston rods, I could have a close look at the cylinders and yes, they are both okay. It's time now to remove the steam chest covers and the steam chest at both sides. I already explained why the engine ran by feeding compressed air into the exhaust and normally slide valve engines won't do this but it's the same at both sides on this engine the slide valves are firmly stuck to the port face with a mixture of steam oil and rust and general dirt and both of the valves are firmly stuck to the crossbar that drives them so they're permanently held in position over the port faces. This area of the engine needs dismantling. I'm using very gentle taps with a small hammer to release the steam chests from the studs. Once I removed the steam chests, I could physically pull the valve off the crossbar. Before I put this engine back together, I'm definitely going to file the slot in the slide valve to stop it sticking. The port face does actually look okay underneath all the dirt and grime. Before reassembling this engine, I'm going to reprofile the port faces, and for this I'm going to use a whetstone, so the studs have to be temporarily removed to allow this to happen. More about this in a future episode. This Stuart Score engine has been built far more recently than the other two. 
and this will be reflected in the way that I finish all three of the engines. The other two are much older and therefore need a sympathetic restoration, whereas this thing just needs a rebuild. The castings need fettling to clean them up to make them the correct shape. And I really am hoping I can reverse the cylinders so the steam inlet is at the top and not at the bottom. In these clips I'm removing the cylinders from the sole plate casting. This is quite simple. Once I slacken the nuts off with a spanner, it was easy enough to just spin off the nuts either by using the spanner or a screwdriver point. I also removed the sole plate from the base casting. This is very dirty, sticky and grimy as well. I should insert a girlfriend joke at this point. But some people are very easily upset, so I shelved the girlfriend jokes. It's a shame, really, they used to make me smile. In this clip, I'm having a look at the main casting. Although it's very well machined, I must admit, I just don't understand why all the casting sprues were left in position. It looks really bad, really rough, and very amateur. Here, for instance, the castings are left rough at the bottom, and all you need really for this job is a final. Even the bed casting isn't cleaned up. The two slots on the top of it are very rough round the edges. These parts are going to be the most difficult to clean up, and I'm not going to do it using a file like this. I'm just demonstrating the principle. I'll show how I clean up these slots in the next episode. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.